In this Get Going training tutorial, we're going to talk about WaveBurner. WaveBurner is an application that comes with logic that enables you to create a commercial CD or a demo or something that you might want to mail to a radio station. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to click on WaveBurner and it's going to open up the application. And just like with most creative applications, we need to go set up our preferences first. Let's click on the name WaveBurner and let's go to our preferences. One of the first things that we should set up under general is how long we want the pause length to be for each marker that we're going to insert here onto the timeline. Remember that WaveBurner is used to create a compact disc or a CD. So we want to build a jump between our tracks. Now depending on what type of music it is, we may want a pause in between each song or we may not. The type of release that I'm putting together here is for electronic music and I don't want any pauses. So notice I have the default pause length at zero. However, the first marker that's inserted on every CD that you create has to be two seconds. And the application will actually force us to make the first marker two seconds. But for now, we'll keep it at zero. The next thing that we need to worry about is our audio driver. If we wanna be able to hear the playback of WaveBurner through our speakers or through our audio interface. So I have an M-Audio Fast Track Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I want that to come out of channels one and two. Okay, that's about all we need to worry about in the preferences for right now. So once again, under the general tab, just making sure that our marker for me is at zero and the audio driver. Let's go ahead and quit out of the preferences. Now, WaveBurner doesn't have a whole lot going on. Here's where we're gonna arrange our tracks to make our CD. You can see that we have an import button, burn up top, and the CD text button, which we're gonna come back and talk about here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get started and let's create a four track EP that we're gonna create a CD master for. So let's go to import. We can click on import here or up here, it doesn't matter. And you can see that uh, we have four tracks here and I've named them one underscore, two underscore to force them to be in order. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and shift select these four files and I'm gonna go ahead and add them here into the region. What's gonna happen when I add these files? It's gonna place them here on our timeline and it will automatically insert a track marker, which is a beautiful thing. Let's go ahead and click on add. There we go, here are our tracks and you can see the different track markers that it's added, which is great. So now if we were to burn this, put the CD in a CD player, we'd be able to jump around on the tracks. Let's go ahead and double click on the first marker and there we go, we open it up and just like I talked about earlier, see how it forced us to make that pause length two seconds for that first marker? But if I click on next to go to the next track, you can see that that pause length is zero, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's go back to track one. So notice that we're under the general tab, which gives us the information here, but we need to make sure that we add the ISRC code in, the International Standard Recording Code. What's gonna happen here is that we're gonna create the CD master and then we're gonna put it back in the computer and rip it with iTunes to create MP3s to give away to the press, to the bloggers, to send to your friends, whoever, but you want this code embedded into the file. So we need to talk about how to get the ISRC code and then we also need to talk about CD text. Now let's talk about the ISRC codes that we're gonna to need to embed for each song on our CD. I've actually generated a code here for our record label and let's talk about what this code is and what it's for. If you'll notice here that we have US, that's the country code. The YBY is the code that our label has been assigned from the RIAA. The next two digits is the year, so it's 2010. And then in our case, for our databasing system, we've come up with a number code for our artist. And this is the first release from this artist in 2010, hence the 001. So I'm gonna copy this number. I'm gonna click on next, go to track two, paste, just backspace that off, put a two, and keep going. This is a little system that I've created to make it much more efficient when inserting the ISRC codes. So I'm going to go ahead and click okay. And now if I ever wanna check out those codes, I can just double click on any track marker. It opens it up and here's the ISRC code. I can go to the previous or the next song to check out the code. If you need help with ISRC codes, you can go to the WaveBurner manual. And you can see that I've done that and I typed in ISRC. 
and here it is. On page 40, this is the description of what the ISRC does and what it's for. You can see that it's mostly used by radio stations to archive recordings and by royalty collection societies to track the codes, you know, to be able to track your songs and etc. So it's here in the manual and you can also go to the riaa.org, I believe. Okay, so that's the deal with ISRC codes inside of WaveBurner. Let's click on the CD text tab. This is the information that's going to show up on your CD player. So there's the track title, Shaker. The performer is Dave Hughes. And one of the things that I do to make WaveBurner really efficient is I'll say copy the artist name, for example. I'll click on Next. And I'll just paste this information to save a lot of typing. Let's go back, Previous. Same thing here. You can see that the track names are kind of coming through, but we don't want the two underscore on there. So let's go through and backspace this stuff off here. Same thing on this file. Let's take out these extra characters. All right, great. So now you can see that we have our CD text set up here in the message window. You may want to put the copyright of the record label. And same trick here. I'm going to put that in, copy it, next, paste it in each window. Okay, great. So you can see that information's there. Oh, looks like we missed one here. Let's take out that underscore. Always good to check our facts and our metadata. Okay, great. So now we've got that part set up. 